great pleasure to introduce to our audience a new friend, yes. a graduate of Central High School 1992, Juan Rubio Jr., who I met at the TV station one Thursday and was so impressed with just the brief three or four minutes that I learned about you that we had time, uh, to, I had time to learn about you that day, and I came back and knew I had to share a piece of your life with our city. Yes, ma'am. And you know, Juan, that our city, by and large, this is a generalization, but by and large, we love America and we love our those who've served in our military. Yes. But you are an incredibly special person. I can say that you're so humble. Uh, I will say that. Thank you. I saw the day I met you that you had on this same hat and shirt yes. and asked you, what are you going to talk about on TV? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, you uh, tell us about why you have this on and what you were talking about on TV that day. Well, what we were talking about was what the Military Order of the Purple Heart Chapter 740 do here in San Angelo and the surrounding areas. And one of the up-and-coming event that we're doing, we're buying sweatshirts for the veterans in nursing homes. Oh. In, all the way from Big Springs to Ballinger, El Dorado, and uh, we have so far have uh, collected about 280 requests for the nursing homes here in San Angelo. And we'll present them at their Christmas uh, oh. party at the nursing homes. But homes. you, in order to wear this purple hat and this purple shirt, have purple more than one Purple Heart I found out about you that day. Yes. Two Purple Hearts and one Silver Star. Yes, ma'am. That is unbelievable yes. for such a, for anyone, but particularly such a young man. Mm -hmm. And I ask you, yes, if you were in JROTC in high school and you said no, you were in the but the the band. band. I was in the band. And now you have children yes. in the band. Yes. Wow. And aren't we proud of them? Yes, we are. Very They're... proud of them. But you have accomplished and gave of yourself um, more than most human beings are willing to. The very fact that you have multiple awards and a Purple Heart is earned, tell our audience that might not know. Well, it, it's not, a, the Purple Heart is not an award to be earned. You receive it upon getting wounded in combat. And uh, I like to make a joke of things about it, but I didn't learn my lesson the first time, so that's why I received <laughs> my second one. Um, and one of the reasons you were in a place to be wounded more than once was you were uh, a medic. Yes, I was a medic. I was a Navy corpsman. I uh, was attached to two Marine units out at Camp Lejeune. And you fought in both Iran Iraq and Afghanistan. Well, I did two combat tours in Iraq and one security detail in Afghanistan. So what about the uh, Silver Star? Well, the Silver Star, I received it for saving three Marines' lives while under firefight, and I was injured at the same time. Uh, I don't know exactly the details you would like for me to go into. Well, you were already hurt, yes, wounded, and went back to help others. You took your eyes off yourself. Um, I told you the very next Sunday when I was uh, asked, called upon to uh, pray at my church. And I, uh, in the prayer before Thanksgiving, I said, help us, the rest of us, to be like this. I didn't name your name because I hadn't asked you permission. 
but I was so impressed that you had taken your eyes off yourself in order to save other people when um, probably none of us know how we would react in, uh, in situations like you were in, but I think I might have hidden I, I, I suspect <laughs> that of myself, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but you didn't, and yet you kept, uh, fif weren't you a part of our military 15, did you tell me 10 or 15, 13, or how many years? Oh, I was in the military for nine years. Okay. Yes. So you kept being in a war zone. You could have stopped that, mm -hmm. couldn't you? Yes. And why didn't you? Well, the day that I got injured, uh, I wouldn't be able to save the Marines' lives without my fellow Marines to give me cover fire to to go out time and time again to to drag them back to safety and, and give them medical attention. And they gave me an ultimatum not an ultimatum, I'm sorry, but a, a decision to make when I was at the hospital if I wanted to go back to my platoon or go back to Germany to get the shrapnel removed from me. And the first thing I asked the doctor was, can I live with the shrapnel in my, in my body? And he said, yes, you can. I said, okay, how soon can I be back to my, my platoon? Because I understand that a corpsman to the Marines is like a father figure. Mm -hmm. And same goes with the Marines to the corpsman. It's, it's kind of hard to explain how they interact with each other. So if I would have left my platoon, that would have really dampened the morale of, of my platoon. And I didn't want to do that. And separating myself from my platoon, it would have done the same thing to me. My goodness, I, uh, I've never walked in those shoes that you did. And you're an, you were, the day I met you, uh, three weeks or so, two weeks ago, right before Thanksgiving, I, you inspired me so greatly. And um, I want you to... To, your wife made this uh, beautiful shadow box for you. Uh, tell me about what is in here because there's a lot of hardware. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, tell us one. Well, this is our basic Cracker Jack uniform or dress, or dress blues. On, on the uniform itself, it, it has all my medals. And when you wear this, you would have to put ribbons on your right side that doesn't have medals and then all your medals on the right side and uh, this is our cover that we wear it's called a Dixie cup and these are the three different types of medals that we can wear this is our minis this is our ribbons and this is our large medals so I see a small you said a mini mm -hmm. uh, sil a purple heart and here's the big one and then your silver star mm -hmm. so you're tell me about your the flag here well the flag was given to me upon my retirement and um, I didn't have the great opportunity like other retirees to have the flag flown anywhere I would like to uh, there just wasn't enough time so it was presented to me upon my retirement. Uh, it, it means a lot. It really does. It, it, it signifies, you know, what our great nation's about. And why you were there. While I was there, yes. 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 yes Tell me about, do you have any, um, and I, this is a, I haven't prepared you for this mm -hmm. question, but did you have some good memories of, of the time you were there, all those years of the people from Afghanistan and Iraq, your interaction with them. Any memories with interaction with them? Yes. Uh, so, go yes, ahead. I do. Go ahead. We had an interpreter 
name, his name was Jason, but that wasn't his real name. We had to give him names so they can hide their identity because they were helping the Americans. Yes. Uh, with, you know, the, to fight against the Iraqi soldiers and insurgents and Al Qaeda. Well, I had the opportunity to, to sit down with this gentleman and he told me his story about how Saddam Hussein and his son uh, kind of killed his, his family one by one. He was the youngest of three. And um, him and his aunt made it to Kuwait. And from there, he went to America when he was 14, 15 years old. And he, uh, when September 11th happened, he knew right away what he wanted to do. He wanted wow. to help the American people to, uh, not to avenge his family, but to help remember their life oh. and to share his story with, with the American soldiers and Marines and sailors uh, about his life, just like what we're, what us in the military service has done for many years. What would make a young man from San Angelo at a really young age choose to go into war voluntarily like you did? What was planted in you and by whom? Who do you think inspired you? Well, I would have to say uh, Miss Rab. She was the administrator for Meadow Creek Nursing Home. That was one of my first medical jobs that I had while I was going to Central. Uh, I was a junior in high school and I worked at the nursing home as a certified nurse's aide. And being raised in a broken family with my parents being divorced and everything, I want to say I learned about life wow. that my three years that I worked there at Meadow Creek and uh, I met a lot of gentlemen that I took care of uh, shaped me to take uh, life not for granted and I learned at a very young age that life itself is precious and and uh, I wanted to do everything in my power to preserve that, to preserve life. Did you have people on either side of your family that were had served in the military? My father served two years in, uh, in the Army. He was drafted, but he was drafted towards the end of Vietnam War. When he got through with his training and everything, he was on standby to go to, uh, to Vietnam, but uh, of course, they called it off, and his orders got canceled, and he wasn't able to. I'm always fascinated uh, about people. It's often, not always, but often a generational. Uh, my father, my both my grandfathers, my brother, my husband have served, as did their parents. That's not always the case, but I am always interested in what inspired a person to go into the military and follow lots of rules that young people sometimes aren't as comfortable in, in mm -hmm. this in the young youth of a, of our country now. Juan, you are an amazing man, and how, what are your needs now for providing sweatshirts? Do you need uh, money donations? Yes, ma'am. Well, we will uh, give you, uh, an, we will give our audience a way, uh, tell them how to donate, and then we'll put it on our screen. Well, it's, uh, all they have to do is call me. Okay. Uh, my cell phone number is 
2051. Okay. And you'll take care of it. I'll take care of it from Are there. you yes. having special uh, sweatshirts made for them? Yes, uh, the sweatshirts has uh, veterans on it. Okay. So they so they'll know that they're not forgotten during the holidays. How nice. Yes. Wow. And how many are you trying to earn money for how many sweatshirts there, two to three hundred about a little, little over two hundred right okay now. yes okay yes well Juan we wish you the best you have inspired us and I hope someone in our audience will be inspired to to uh, volunteer in every whatever way we can to help our country and to help others thank you Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Bonds.